pizza. Pizza. I'm going to make some pizza, okay? Now, I've done this before, but this has a little bit of a twist to it. I have corn tortillas, so I'm just going to use this instead of making them with flour tortillas. And yes, I do have a cold. I caught Paul's cold. Um, you know, uh, stuffy nose, a little bit of scratchy throat. But, you know, I'm still moving on. I'm still living my life. You can't just sit. Because you can get pneumonia that way. You do not want to, you know, just sit in your van all day. And I want to keep my body going, right? Well, we're going to have pizza today. It's fun. I had a little bit of a twist. I've got summer sausage instead of pepperoni. The last time I made pizza, I bought a package of pepperoni. Well, unless you're making pizza, you know, um, I couldn't find another use that I wanted to use for the pepperoni. So it went bad. But the summer sausage won't. And I can use it for all kinds of things. Now, what I like to do with the summer sausage is cutting it, cut it into slices and then cut cheese into slices. Got some uh, cheddar cheese here. And make and some pickles, maybe some olives, maybe some cut celery. And you've got like almost a little meal. So there's a lot of uses for this summer sausage. Well, I'm going to use this in a pizza. So, and I'm going to use um, black olives. These are sliced black olives. And pizza sauce, just this was like a dollar thirty at Walmart, and I've got some cheese. No, it's not mozzarella, but so what? You can use any kind of cheese and and any kind of meat if you want to put meat on it. Now, if you're vegetarian, you can cut some bell peppers and onions, or even saute some garlic and put on it. Now, here's the kicker, though, everybody: if you don't have an ice chest or a refrigerator. I mean, you're going to have stuff left over, right? You're not going to use all of this. Probably not all of the um, black olives either. Cheese is fine. Cheese keeps. Yeah. I mean, it won't keep a month, but, you know, it will probably start, um, especially in the summer, it'll start molding. But here's the thing that I suggest. If you don't have those, make this like out boondocking with your friends. Have a pizza party. You could take this out on a, lay your table out, invite your friends over for um, a, a, a campfire, duh. Invite them over during the campfire, have your table out. You can put like, get your stove out, but put um, one of those um, barriers around it, wind guards, and just make pizzas. Say, who's ready for a pizza? And just make pizzas and use it all up if you don't have an ice chest. Okay, let's get started with some pizza. Okay, I want to go ahead and just cut that open. I don't need a lot. I'm going to cut this much. I'm going to cut it very thin. There we go. And then I'll take the plastic wrap off. Okay, that looks probably enough. Take this off. Now, what I'm going to do with this is cut it into, like, quarters. I don't want big pieces because that would be too hard to bite. There we go. We'll cut them into quarters. Okay, my olives. There's going to be juice in here, so I'm just opening it a little bit. I have my little baggie ready, and I will drain the juice in here so it's easy to throw away. In fact, what I'm going to do is just leave this. I'm going to take out, see, it's, it should sit there. I'm going to take out a few. Let's see, let's get this why doesn't, this doesn't want to come off, does it? There we go. I'm going to get a paper towel and kind of put some on a paper towel. There we go. It's a bit too much. You might have to make two pizzas, right? And I'm going to have these here kind of get them dried off. And I'm going to put this back in here. 
There we go. This would be a great way to keep these. And then I can put these in Paul, put these in Paul's refrigerator. Let me open the cheese, get that ready. open. There we go. Get my corn tortillas ready. Let's see. Put some oil. Okay. Now this is not totally level, but that's okay. Let's get this in there. There. Little pizza sauce. Don't use a lot. It doesn't need a lot. Spread it all the way around. There we go. Put some cheese on it fairly quickly. Cheese. You can put any kind of pizza topping on this. And your sausage. Let that melt. What do you think? I think it looks good. These little strings here are like cheese. Okay, let's do the test. Let's try it with summer sausage. Take this end piece here. Can you hear me chew? <laughs> I 
got this one cooking. It's almost done. It does have a good pizza flavor because of the sauce, but it's almost like a sandwich. Mm-hmm. Well, this will be my lunch, huh? What do you think? It almost looks like a a cookie with raisins <laughs> from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pepperoni would make it taste a little bit more like pizza, but this is pretty good. Class. Now, you had questions. <laughs> Let me answer it for you. You said, where do I sleep? If you've been watching me for the past three years, you know, but a lot of you are new. Hey, welcome everybody. I sleep right here. I sleep on the floor. Well, this is my flooring. Exhibit A. <laughs> right, right here. I've got two two layers of towels i've got two layers of blankets thick blankets and i have well then there's another blanket and then i have a really thick carpet this is what the carpet looks like because if you know a minivan they're not straight down right so my minivan goes like this it curves around so it goes shh, right so this is an eight by five carpet. Did you write that down, class? It'll be a test, eight by five. Let me get this up, there we go, better. That way I don't have to go like that. Okay. <sighs> okay, so what I did was on my carpet, and I don't wanna cut, I didn't wanna cut it. Cause then the phrase, yeah. So what I did was my carpet, it's thinner here because this comes out, I brought it up. And it's really handy because I can put things behind here. Yeah. I've got under here, I've got a, a um, like a hand towel um, positioned in there. So um, it just doesn't fall into the abyss in here, right? But yeah, I've got a little, um, book and this on this side this is the one I really like this side here because I keep my scissors you know as a nomad I had no idea living in a house I use scissors so often exhibit B scissors got my bushcraft knife oh yeah I love my knife I use it to cut food things, boxes, right. And I've got my little notes in here. Yeah, I can park things in here too because it goes up. Pretty handy, huh? So, you know what? This is pretty cozy. And it's enough padding for me. For me, I enjoy having a hard surface to sleep on. But that's not all. But wait, that's not all. This is my sleeping bag. It's a minus 25 temperature sleeping bag, which means it's pretty darn thick. And it's here, it's parked here. When I get ready for bed, I roll it out. I've got a sheet tucked in here and I put a, um, a twin sheet on it. And I don't just sleep on this. I mean, I like sheets, right? And then this is where I parked my blankets and my pillows in here. And I roll it out and I sleep here. Easy peasy. I don't like to have a build out. I did never wanted a build out. When I researched this lifestyle, I watched van tours. And I knew looking, I knew I wanted a minivan. And this will be on the test, so yeah. Um, I wanted a minivan and I figured 
if I had a build out, because you could do a build out, you could have a bed frame, but that's going to come all the way up to here. I'm a side sleeper. I knew that I did not want, I would, and I like to have my pillows. So, um, for my knees, I knew if I had a pillow for my knees here, it's going to end up falling off that frame. I knew that that would not work for me having a bed frame. It just wouldn't because if I needed it wide enough, it would come way out here. I wouldn't have any room. I like this because I have lots of room. Let me put my pillows back. So this is sort of during the day. This is my living room and this is my couch. And this is how I said. Exhibit C, pillows. <laughs> this is my couch. Yeah. So this is um, this is how I live. In the morning, I have my bedroom. When I, after I roll everything up, it takes me about five minutes to get this nice, put away nicely for the day, and um, then wash up, and then it becomes my breakfast nook. And I sit here and I make coffee. Yeah. It's pretty darn cool, right? Okay. Next, I'm going to move on to a movie review. Last night, myself and Paul went to a movie theater. I haven't been to a movie theater in a long time. And um, we saw a man named Otto. Now, it has Tom Hanks in it, so I knew it, it would be good. Well... <laughs> I remember reading or listening to an audiobook called A Man Named Uvi. I think it was Uvi. That's how you pronounce it. Um, the author is from Scandinavia. From, I think he's from Sweden. And so it really, the whole setting was in, um, in Scandinavia country. Well, it was a very endearing book. Oh, my gosh. And I loved it. And I, I do remember, I mean, I read it a long time ago. Sorry about my throat. It's a little bit rough <coughs> with my cold. Yeah, <laughs> my nose is okay, but every once in a while, my, no, my throat. Okay, so here's my review of the movie. Because I did um, listen to the audiobook. It's like reading a book, really because I could still um, do things around my house or at work and I could listen to the book. And so I literally, at that point in my life, I was all together, I read like almost, um, listened to almost 500 books. So I'm well read. A lot of those um, books became movies. Well, it was really good. So what they did was the script writers um, Americanized the storyline and it's the same storyline but they americanized it now the main producer was um it's tom hanks wife rita and i can never remember her last name but she was the main producer and then the um other producers and then they named two tom hanks and some other person now it did in introduce another actor and his name was Truman Hanks, and I thought, oh, aha, uh -huh. yeah, um, Tom Hanks, and I'll bet that it's probably maybe his grandson, because I don't know if you guys are uh, fans of Mad Men, but his, his other son, oh gosh, I can't think of his name, but he had a big part in Mad Men for a while, almost for a whole season. He was the priest um, from Peggy Olsen's uh, church, that she was Catholic. And her parent, her mother, and her sister were Catholic, so he was the priest. And then, if you remember Mad Men, and when I saw, I figured, oh, Truman Hanks. So we were all during the movie. We were looking for somebody that looked like Tom Hanks. Well, it turned out to be um, Truman Hanks played the part of um, Otto when he was young, yeah, and um, you know, like an, a young adult, not like a child. But yeah, um, and it looked it looked more like um, the character, his Tom Hanks' son that was in Mad Men. Truman Hanks looked more like him. So I'm going to guess, I'm just guessing, that Truman Hanks is the grandson of Tom Hanks. Isn't that cool that they get to be in a movie together? And he can promote his family like that. They just produce movies. So it was a good movie. Now... 
I'm not going to tell you too much of the storyline, but I will tell you, it'll pull on your heartstrings. It will. And Tom Hanks does such a good job. I mean, he's a grumpy old man. Otto is a grumpy old man, just like Ovi was. I think because I listened to the audiobook, I think his name is O-V-E. And it's Scandinavian name. And I think he pron they pronounced it Ovi. Ovi? Yeah. I mean, Ovi was a grumpy old man. Oh, my gosh. But there was, you know, they took in in um, a man named Otto, which is the movie I saw last night. They took that script. And like I said, they Americanized it. But they embellished on a lot of the scenarios. They had the same characters. But they had to, because it was American, they had to change the scenarios of what goes on in America than what goes on in, in like Sweden or Norway. So it'll pull on your heartstrings and you get to see the transformation of Otto. And I do not remember in A Man Named Uvi, I do not remember them going so much into his past as they did in this movie, A Man Named Otto. So I think they embellished on it and I think they did a really good job. It's very similar, but so different. So maybe you read the book, A Man Named Uvi. Um, I don't know, but I recommend it. I give it, I give it a thumbs up out of, um, out of five stars. Mm, I'm going to give it four and a half, 4.5 stars. <laughs> um, there are a couple movies I saw posters of I really want to watch. Yeah, I really want to watch them. So I'm going to be on the lookout for them. My voice is getting a little scratchy. So I think I'll end this class right now. And at the end, there will be, and coming up, there'll be a test on my bedding. So I hope you get a good score, okay? You can put your... Um, you can put your responses and your answers in the comments, okay? You make me slap your head. I would never. I'm all about peace. Peace, um, peace, love, unity, and respect. Plur. And that's from the rave world. Plur. My kids used to go to raves. I let them. I mean, they've got their own stories. And um, <clears throat> just like we do if we're older, that we're from the 60s, right? But um, yeah, they always, everything was about plur, plur, peace, love, unity, and respect. Okay, so I would never hit your hand. But I guess it's a back scratcher. But I don't use this as a back scratcher anymore because... Da, 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 da. I've got another back scratcher and I love it. <laughs> yeah, it really does the job. Let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I love you guys. See you tomorrow. Sorry I didn't put out a video the day before. Oh my gosh. Um, just couldn't get it done with all the car trouble that you saw, the painful and awkward car trouble. But coming up tomorrow, there'll be a video for you. I love you. This is for you. Please subscribe and that will be for me. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Bye.